Spasiva Balshoya, thank you so much for being here. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Nadia Talakonikova. One year ago, I addressed Putin from the stage of the TED conference, and I delivered a message directly to him. I told him that he knows that he has lost already, and that's why he's so openly evil. It's a wounded creature, bleeding its poisonous intestines on everyone and everything around, torturing, murdering, bombing hospitals and maternity wards. It's been a year. And I have some updates. I know that we will win long term. Time and history is not on Putin's side. Putin and his imperialist craziness will pass. And I'm sure younger Russian people would eventually opt for living in a peaceful, successful, democratic country and being welcomed in the world rather than being cannon fodder in imperialist wars and treacherously invading innocent people's homes and taking their lives. History and time is not on Putin's side, but it's taking too long. I used to be proud of being from Russia, from Siberia. I refused to leave Russia. After I served two years in jail, all my friends abroad were asking, why don't you leave? I didn't want to. I wanted to be a Russian political activist, and for that, I needed to be in Russian. After getting released, we founded Media Zona, teamed up with a group of journalists who lost their jobs because they refused to lie about the Russian invasion in Ukraine in 2014. We reported truthfully, Putin invaded Ukraine. Putin annexed Crimea. The day we got out of jail, we started to work on a prison reform initiative because we did not want people to continue dying from torture, overworking, and lack of medical treatment in Gulag. Since my release from jail, I was regularly physically assaulted, arrested, and threatened to be thrown back in jail. And still, I refused to leave because I wanted to be a Russian political activist and I needed to be in Russia. I loved my country. I saw courageous people around me, journalists, fierce feminist activists, proud, gorgeous gay activists, human rights defenders risking their lives in Chechnya and Dagestan, artists and musicians who didn't shy away from politics. I was in love with every one of them, with their spirit, strength, inner beauty, their readiness to risk everything to protect the most sacred human life, dignity, and happiness. I used to be proud of being from Russia. Now I'm ashamed. I'm from a terrorist state. I'm from a dictatorship led by a war criminal. In these dark times, I still have people who shine brightly. Among monstrosity, distortion, ugliness, and corruption of human spirit. More often than not, those people would end up being in jail or in exile. It is Sasha Skachilenko, an openly lesbian artist who got sentenced to seven years. Her crimes? Anti-war stickers. She said in her closing statement, despite the fact that I am in the cell, it is possible that I am much more free than all of you. It is Ilya Yashin, whom I've known for over 15 years, we stood shoulder to shoulder at countless rallies. 
Today he is one of Putin's captives. Ilya serves eight year and a half for supporting Ukraine. And in the light of recent events, I'm terribly scared for his life. It is Vladimir Karamurza serving 25 years old, 25 years sentence for speaking out against the war in Ukraine. You can't stop the future with bullets, poison or prison, wrote Vladimir a few days ago from his solitary confinement in a Siberian penal colony. Thousands of people came to Alexei Navalny's funeral, risking their freedom, risking everything they have. Russia without Putin, they shouted. Putin is a killer, free political prisoners, and also no to war. Today, Russians who are still in country risk 15, 25 years for supporting Ukraine. We live under a military dictatorship, and yet still people support Ukraine. They want to stop the bloodshed. We, Russian activists, used to say, my Russia is in jail, my Russia is in jail. Today we say, my Russia is murdered. On February 16th, Putin has murdered my friend and my president, Alexei Navalny. In these dark years of the full-scale invasion in Ukraine, years of pain and shame for failing to overthrow Putin in time, Alexei was giving me and millions of other Russians hope Jailed, isolated from his family, and the entire world, he still made me remember and be proud of Russia I once lived in, our tribe who fought for free Russia, free-spirited, brave, creative, open-minded, clever, kind people. Not perfect, no, none of us were perfect, but I loved us in our imperfections. What matters is to have a moral compass, ideals and guts to, find, to fight for these ideals. In Russia, Navalny is the one who in a postmodern world of cynicism and relativism made having a strong moral compass cool again. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing, Navalny said when he was asked about what people should do if he gets murdered. I was 17 when I stepped in the world of political action. It was 17 years ago. I was growing up in the 90s. I'm a part of a lucky generation who witnessed competitive politics in Russia. It wasn't perfect, but nothing is. My daughter is less lucky. Born in 2008, not grown, now she's grown into a fierce young activist. She has seen nothing but Putin. My parents were cheering, cheering up for Perestroika and leading the movement for democratic Russia in the village near Arkhangelsk where they met Perestroika and the fall of the Soviet Union. We still ask ourselves what our country would look like today if Boris Yeltsin, the first president of Russia, passed his power retiring in 1999, not to a KGB agent Putin, but to a young democratic politician Boris Nemtsov. We would never know. Boris Nemtsov was shot dead in his back, in front of the Kremlin in 2015, after he organized huge protests against Putin and against Russia's war in Ukraine. Every autocracy is based on two pillars. It breaks your body and it breaks your spirit. The first one, beatings, prisons, murders. Primary goal of all of this is to break your body. The second one is more heightened and more dangerous in a way. It targets your soul 
and results in broken spirit, which manifests in self-censorship, learned helplessness, compliance, apathy. It makes you ask yourself, what can I change? Is everything predetermined? We can still prevent the world crumbling into autocracy, but it takes determination and courage. Democracy is the most fragile form of human organization and it's precious. It needs, for, it needs, needs us to show up for it. Democracy needs us. Help Ukraine win. Help Russian dissidents to fight Putin. And maybe do not elect a Putin-loving authoritarian narcissist for your president again. <laughs> Trust me, you won't love it in Putin's Russia. I am often asked what can be done. Simple answers. First, aggressive sanctions against Putin and his circle. Second, support Ukraine with any and all resources they need. Third, support Yulia Navalny in getting accountability for the murder of her husband. <laughs> to close, I would like to address the intangible. Alexei warmed our hearts with his smile, his determination, his love. While looking at the photos of his casket yesterday, we're all left with an unbelievable emptiness. I struggled with how to put this feeling into words and share that with you all here. I considered the quote from my trial that applies here as well. Like Solzhenitsyn, I believe that in the end, words will break cement. Solzhenitsyn wrote, so the word is more sincere than concrete. So the word is not a trifle. Then may noble people begin to grow and their word will break cement. But this vision of hope and the cracks in the cement do not wash away the indelible images of our friend and hero Alexei in his casket yesterday. When I was serving my prison sentence alone, I escaped into the world of books. I was trapped in my cell, but my mind wandered to deep and far places. I learned that in his final week, held alone in this polar wolf camp, so far removed from everyone, Alexei was reading the novel Nasledia, which can be translated as either Inheritance or Legacy by Vladimir Sarokin. I'll close with a scene from the book about a monument to someone who has just passed away. And while I sit here with the images of flowers and photos of Alexei across the world and the image of the tears in his wife's eyes, or the image of his corpse lying in the church in Moscow, I imagine Alexei reading this words in his prison cell. In this excerpt, Roland marvels at the monument he has just made for the deceased Dr. Gaiden. <clears throat> the marble monument rose up majestically over the sandy precipice. The yellow rays of the setting sun danced in the folds of its marble robe, glittering on its shoulders and bare head. Having flown around the monument, Roland hovered directly in front of its massive marble face and placed his hand in its silver glove 
on Turkey's high brow with the furrows of its marble wrinkles. The marble face was at the same height as Roland, a bit of silver floating in the air. He was getting ready to say something to this face, but having sought the better of it, he stretched his arms out along his silver body and bowed to the monument. Then shot sharply upwards and set his course into southeasterly direction. The marble giant remained there, standing on its plateau, not far from the precipice and the pine stump. The sun set. The sky darkened and the stars began to shine. A mist appeared over the swamp. Thousands of froggy voices come into life. Silence reigned in the crippled birch forest. The clouds obscuring the moon moved off to the side and the moonlight came down onto the monument's face. In the moonlight, the face acquired a new expression as if the marble giant were getting ready to ply apart its willful lips so as to inform the world that spread out all around it of something very important, but didn't yet wish to do so. In this excerpt, Roland marvels at the monument. The end of this passage can also be read as a statement about the future that is equally applicable to Navalny. We do not know yet the final words that will come from his bravery, humanity, and great sacrifice. Please stand for a few moments of silence. Thank you. With all my heart, Alexei. Pakoisas miram.